Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17. What a wonderful atmosphere with the choir. I really love that ministration. The Lord strength to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17. Quickly. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Next verse. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. Freely eat. Next verse. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Hallelujah. The Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. This evening, I present the word of the Lord to you that is titled Divine Direction. Divine Direction. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, divine direction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From the scripture we read, we could see an instruction that God gave to Adam. Hallelujah. Let us look at verse 16. Let us see our emphasis. The Bible says in verse 16, the Bible says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. God was speaking to Adam directly, and God was commanding him, giving him a commandment. And the commandment was that of every tree he may eat freely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then verse 17. Another instruction followed and said, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. The day you partake of this tree, you are going to die. Now, when we look at the story, it's a very popular scripture. I don't know if I should give you the other scripture. That's chapter 3, where the Bible says, And the serpent came to the woman. Remember, God gave man, Adam, this commandment. Hallelujah. But in chapter 2, in chapter 3, we are seeing that the, the woman had a visitor that is called the serpent. And Satan, through that serpent, began to entice the woman based on this instruction that God has given to the man. Remember, there were two in the garden. Both the man and the woman. Am I teaching here? But it was the man that received the instruction. God told him, the day you eat, the God did not say the day your family eats. He said the day you personally you eat, that day you will die. So of every tree, you are not permitted to eat this one. You are permitted to eat every other tree. But this one has been set aside for you, from you. You are not permitted to take of this tree. Now, the serpent knew that the only way he could make the man eat the tree and to disobey God is for him to look for someone that is close to the man. Someone that the man respects and honors. Someone that the man loves so much. Am I teaching here? And the serpent thought of the woman. Because the woman was the closest to the man. And the serpent went to the woman and said. As God thoroughly and truly said. That you should not partake of this. Now let us look at verse 3. Now. That's verse 3 verse 1. Sorry. It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord had made. And he said unto woman, yea, had God said, yea, shall not eat of this tree 
of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Hallelujah. 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 The serpent began to ask, what is that instruction gave to your husband? What is the instruction God gave to your husband? As God actually said, you should not eat of any tree in the garden, the woman said, no. God said, we should not eat only the tree that is in the middle of the garden. Now, this is divine direction. Divine direction is, is the commandment that God gives to a man personally. Not a general commandment like the Ten Commandments. Remember, when God is working with a man, God deals with him personally. Am I communicating here? There are other commandments that you are that everyone must abide, everyone must obey. We call it the normal, the general commandments, the ten commandments, the love of God, the, 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 the commandment of God for the whole world. But when you are working with God, God oftentimes has a personal commandment that he gives to a man. For example now, if you are very close to God and are working with God, there are things that God will tell you not to do and things that God will tell you to do. This is part of God's plan, dealings for you so that you'll be able to achieve a particular purpose that God has designed for you. You must understand that this divine direction is based on the purpose that God has set for you ahead. Remember, not everyone has the same purpose. Not everyone has the same vision. Am I teaching here? Every one of us said that we are gathered here. There is a vision and a purpose that we are to fulfill. And you must understand that for that vision and purpose to manifest, there is a divine direction. Or should I say divine commandment or instruction that will be given to you so that through that instruction, you can reach your destination. So it is not what everybody is doing that you are permitted to do. It's not what everybody is celebrating and everybody is doing that you can do. Am I communicating here? Why? Because there is a direct or personal intimacy, fellowship, partnership with God and with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what is divine direction? If you have your pen, I want you to write it down. Divine direction is the commandment of God given to a man as a personal dealings with him. Divine direction is the commandment of God given to a man as a personal dealings with him. Or you can say divine direction are not doctrinal teachings but specified instruction given for the glory of God and for the purpose of man. For the glory of God and for the purpose of man. Ever look up. Everyone that God called, God has an instruction that is personal to them. Am I communicating here? To Adam, God said, You are not permitted to eat of this tree. Which is, his wife could reach it. His children could reach it, but not him. God told him, the day you eat of this tree, you will die. That was why when the, when the serpent came to the woman, the woman was not the target of Satan. Ever look up. It was the man. Am I teaching here? Because the devil is looking for a way that he can sabotage the purpose of God. In the life of Adam. Now when we read the scripture carefully. Which we all know. The Bible says that when Eve ate. The Bible never recorded that her eyes was open. It was when Adam ate. That 
that his eyes was open. What does that reveal? It means that the commandment and the instruction was to Adam and not to Eve. And when God was telling Adam, Eve was not there. So the target was not to demand. So when Eve took the fruit, it did not do anything to her. But it was when Adam ate that it now reigned in her. Something changed about them. Something miraculously changed about them. And the Bible said they became naked. Am I communicating here? If you are working with God and you have fellowship with God, there are certain instructions that God will give to you. Those instructions may not look correct. Those instructions by carnal and by uh, 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 physical um, um, interpretation or understanding, it will not make sense. So everybody that will fulfill purpose in life must adhere to God's personal dealings with them. Am I communicating here? Look at the story of Abraham. Give me the book of Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. When we look at the story of Abraham, Abraham also have a personal dealings with God. A divine direction came to Adam. Adam, if you must have a child, Adam, if you must be a father of many nations, there are personal instructions I will give to you which you, you must keep. This instruction is not to your wife. And after you have born the child, let no razor come on top of his hair. Does that mean that if I born a child now and I didn't thought I didn't cut his hair, does that mean it's going to be as powerful as something? No. In fact, there are some churches who still practice that today. But do they have the power that something had? That is a personal dealings of God. And you don't take personal dealings of God and take it and make it doctrinal base. Because some people have taken people's personal dealings with God and converted and say, now, as from today, this is what, what all of us will be obeying. Am I communicating here? Come on, shout Jesus. So Samson was given an instruction. In your life, don't ever cut your hair. Don't ever drink alcohol because that is the secret of your power. The day you violate it, that day my presence will leave you. Samson was seen sleeping with harlots. Samson was seen sleeping with women. We were sleeping with the Philippians. Um, um, is it the Philippines um, or what are they calling them? The Philippines and all that. And what happened? There was no leakage of power. He will still, the Bible said that when Samson slept with the harlot, the, the, the harlot came and said, Samson, the Philistines are on you. 
Samson shook up himself, rose up, and carried the door, broke the door, went to the gates, took the gates, killed all of them, and took the gate on top of a mountain. A gate that covers a city. A one man carry a gate. Let us say, let's give somebody this door now and say, carry this door. Don't, carry, don't just take it to this gate. Take it on top of a mountain. You climb mountain with it. What kind of power is that? Am I communicating here? That was the kind of power Samson had. But all his power was tied to a personal and a divine direction. A divine instruction that God has given to him. The day he violated, the day the enemy knew the secret, what was he not to do that God has said, God left him. A time came, we all know the story of Delilah. Delilah came and met him and said, um, honey, you want to marry me? He said, yes. He said, okay, don't worry. Tell me the secret of your power. He said, the secret of my power is that if you tie my hand and my leg, I will not have power anymore. She tied his leg and his leg. Early the man, she said, oh, Samson, my husband, the feeling, the, the, your enemies are here. The Bible says he, he, just, he just tore it as if he, he, was, he was shaking off a, a, a what is it, like a wax or something. Then she began to cry. Oh, you man, I thought you said you loved me. You're a liar. So you cannot tell me the secret of your power. At one point again, she came and asked him, tell me, what is the instruction your God told you to do so that you can keep on having this power? Because by reason of observation, we have seen that this power is not ordinary. And it depends on a personal dealings with God. What is, your, what is a taboo to you? Your, what you know you do? That when you do it, the power lift, that is what I'm looking for. And he lied to her and said, okay. The Lord said that anytime I close my eyes or you blindfold me, I'll, my power will leave. The same thing she went the following day. She blindfolded him. She thought that was it. But the day he now opened his mouth and said, my power is on my head. Since when I was a child, an angel appeared and said, that in my life I should never cut my hair. She said, okay, let me try that one. She cut off his hair. I said, Samson, your enemies are here. Samson woke up like before. He thought his power was still there. His power left. And the Bible said, and the spirit of the Lord left him. The spirit of the Lord was tied to a personal instruction that God gave to him. Not for him not to fornicate. Not for him not to commit adultery. Not for him not to eat um, it's too much, but based on one, don't ever cut your hair. The day you do it, my presence will leave you. And when we read the story of Samson, we know that Samson was wayward. Samson never prayed to God. A man that was never close to God. An instruction came through his mother and he kept it. The day that Samson prayed, the Bible says that he prayed and he hit a rock. Water gushed out because that day he slew the Philistines, the, the enemies of Israel, with a jawbone of a donkey. And he killed almost 5,000 men. Are you people get what I'm saying now? We can count all and all. These are not doctrinal teachings. So it is not everybody that can keep it and get the result, it is personal. What is God telling you not to do? Because I know that if you are working with God, and I know that if you have fellowship with God, there will be instructions that God will give to you personally for you to reach your destiny. And if you haven't discovered that, that, that personal direction, that instruction, I tell you, you haven't discovered purpose. And for that, you can never fulfill purpose. Every purpose is tied to a particular instruction. A divine instruction, a time came that God said, now, Abraham, I'm about to promote you to another level. But what will depend is, what you depend on is this. You are, not, you are now going to circumcise, you are now going to circumcise every male that is born in your house, even of that of your slave. Am I, am I communicating here? And the Bible says, Abraham circumcised himself. And circumcise all the male in his house. Am I teaching her? A time came. God wanted to now 
bless him after God has given him a child. And God wanted to enlarge his territory. God told him, say, Abraham, now carry your only son. Go and kill him. Go and sacrifice your son to me. That instruction, if you hear it, does it make sense? How will a God ask you to kill somebody? But God said, no, this is my personal dealing. You must go and kill your son for me to know that you are actually my child. And for that, my covenant will be established. And Abraham obeyed. The Bible says he didn't even tell his wife because he knows that if he tells his wife, his wife doesn't have the heart to carry it. So there are times that if you see some people doing certain things, you don't, you are not, don't be quick to judge them because you don't know what instruction God has given to them. In order to fulfill purpose, there must be a divine direction. There must be a divine instruction. I told you some time ago, we even read it here, Ezekiel, how that God told a prophet to eat shit. And God said, this is my instruction for you. Now, if someone hears it, Will somebody say it is God? The person who don't understand it will say this is not God or God. It's an evil spirit that spoke to you. Which God will tell you to eat shit? Which God in heaven will tell you to eat shit? It's not like some of you, God told you, leave Zaria, go to Abuja. Or leave Abuja, come to Zaria and I will bless you. And, and all your friends say, why are you leaving Abuja? Where there are rich men, senators, ministers. This is the conference where, this is where a lot of people are making it. And God is telling you to go into one bush. One place where there are no companies, no job. In fact, the rate of job opportunity is low. And God said, go there. That is the place I will bless you. And yet you are wondering. If only you can obey. That some of us, God is sending you to Sokoto. And God said, I will make you the next damn good thing in Sokoto. Listen to me. It is not the location you find yourself. It is the God that is with you that matters. Am I communicating here? Somebody's not getting this. Is someone getting what I'm saying here? It is not the location that you find yourself. It, it, it does depend that if God has actually spoken to you, what is your personal dealings with God? What is it God has planted in your heart for you to do or to keep on doing so that you can see progress in your life? It may not make sense to others because it is not for them. It is for you and not for others. Am I, am I teaching here? Am I preaching here? It was a personal. And that was the revelation behind Moses. Moses gave the Ten Commandments. He told them, this is what the Lord said. You will not even marry a, any woman that is not part of the children of Israel. Don't, marry, don't defy yourself by, by any woman that is outside. The next chapter, the Bible says, and Moses went to marry an Ethiopian woman. Now, by the reason of what Moses has given the first, it is a violation of the commandment. Because you said that nobody should marry another woman. But Moses, what are we saying? The Bible says that his sister, elder sister, and Aaron, the priest, rose up and said, no, what kind of man are you? What kind of prophet are you? What kind of dealings you have with God? If, if the, we also to be hear from God, we don't believe that it is God giving you that instruction. And the Bible says, and God had it, and God's anger kindled in heaven, and God came down. And God told them, he said, if there be any prophet among you, I will reveal myself to him in a dream and in a vision, but not with my servants. Divine instruction is given to the matured. Divine instruction is given to those who have come to a point whereby they've known the heart of the Father. Divine instruction is given to those who recognize the voice of God, who knows the dealings of God, who know the extent at which God can operate with them. Divine instruction. What instruction has God given to you? You may be thinking of going to Patakot because you know Patakot is a fatal land. And God said, no. My sister, don't go to Patakot. I am sending you to Castina. You may be thinking, okay, all your sisters are in London. And God said, go to London. And God said, no. I am not sending you to London. Go to Malawi. If you must fulfill destiny, you must learn to submit yourself to the sovereignty of God. To the instructions of God. Where has God said you should go to? Abraham, leave your father's house. Because it is part of your consecration to God. A man who cannot fulfill, or a woman who cannot fulfill God's consecration, cannot hold God's power. 
you cannot be a recipient of God's anointing if you are not ready to host God's instruction. And this is what has crippled many believers today. When a man, a carnal man, goes and meets a native doctor, the man gives him a direct, or what would I call it now, a demonic direction and say, go and do this every middle of the night by 12. Maybe do like this. And when you do that, your business will be going high. You will see the man at he will be so attentive and will be so faithful doing that. And before you know, something is happening to his business. He's making it. Let God speak to a Christian now. You say, no, it is a devil. Maybe God has even told somebody, don't give me 10%. Give me 50%. And I'm going to change your life to be a wonder. There are people God has given instructions like that. He said, no, as for you, don't give me 10%. 10% is what others are giving. As from now, I require 90% from you. And when you are faithful to obey that voice, that is when you see the glory of God. The glory of God doesn't come upon a man that is empty. The glory of God comes upon men of sacrifice. Because divine direction will make you to become a living sacrifice to God. What others are doing, what others are enjoying, God may say, no, to you it is a taboo. By ordinary logic, interpretation and understanding, there is nothing wrong with it. So God may say to you, as a Christian, don't ever taste alcohol. But it be like, no, uh, alcohol, as long as the Bible says don't drink and be drunken, there's no problem. So I should take alcohol. And God said, no, for you, I forbid it. Am I communicating here? There's a divine instruction. A divine revelation. God must have spoken to the heart of many here and given you personal instruction. Some people might be, come to my house and sweep. Come to my house and do this. Come to my house and do that. How faithful are you? You are there, you want to write admission and pass and enter into the college. And God said, I'm going to test you for two years. And I'm giving you an instruction now. Go and be cleaning the shoes of Papa. I have seen a testimony of a young man. And the Lord told him, every day, make sure you go to the house of your man of God. And make sure you sweep his house and clean everywhere. That was the instruction he had. And God said, I will turn your life to be a wonder. And he did that for two years. The third year, God changed his life. He got a job in oil company. Instruction. Divine instruction. Can I pray for somebody here? May God grant you grace to be able to obey divine instruction. I prophesy to somebody here. And I decree and I declare. May you be able to carry that instruction and fulfill them in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare, may God's instruction come to you in Jesus' mighty name. Let me show you a story quickly. First Kings chapter 13. First Kings chapter 13 from verse 1 to 3. Every time you fought divine instruction, there is a repercussion. Every time you don't obey this divine instruction and divine direction, there is always what? A repercussion. Please listen to me. There are many of you who are saying, Lord, I want to bless me. But that blessing comes with an instruction. Lord, I want to have a wife. Lord, I want to have an husband. And God says, for this door to be opened, this is the key. This is the instruction. Because those instructions are like keys. They are personal to you. It's not for everybody. Am I communicating here? Now look at the scripture. And behold, it, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Next verse. And he cried against the altar of the uh, altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus said the Lord, behold, a child be born unto the house of David, Joash by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high places that burnt incense upon thee and men's bone shall be burnt upon thee and he gave a sign the same day saying this is the sign which the lord has spoken behold the altar shall be rent and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out a great man of god came with the word of the lord there was an instruction and there was a sign, I mean, there was a sign God gave through the man. He said, this altar will be will destroyed. Now, as I'm talking, this altar will split. For you people to know that the word I have said will come to pass. Am I communicating here? Hello? Are we, are, we, are, are we listening here? A great man of God. A man of God. And the Bible said, give me verse 4, please. 
Let us see verse 4. Kabbalah Takabaya. Verse 4. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. When King Jeroboam. When King Jeroboam. Had the sin of the man of God. Uh -huh. Which had cried against the, the altar. altar uh -huh. In Bethel. That he put forth his hand. That he put forth his hand. From the altar saying. From the altar saying. Lay hold on him. Lay hold on him. And his hand which he put forth. And his hand him, which is put forth. Uh -huh. Against him. Uh -huh. Dried up. I will look up. It's just like a man of God is standing here. And there is an altar where where choirs are sitting then behind is the is the is the prophet are, are we going somewhere then he prophesied and said upon this altar this altar there's a son that will be born and that son will destroy this altar it will do all these things and he even said a sign shall come your, your this altar shall split into two and this and this shall happen now the king had it and the king was on the altar burning incense to his own gods the king turned and said, are you not afraid? Me, king, I am here. And yet you are prophesying on the altar. And the king just did mistake and pointed at him. Say, hold him. The Bible says the moment he stretched out his hand like this, his hand stands still. He could not draw his hand again. The Bible says his hand withered. Please, is that not a sign and a wonder? It means that this prophet carried power. But look at a condition that God gave this prophet. For signs and wonders to happen, for this prophecy to come to pass, God gave him a divine instruction. Can we jump to verse 7, please? Jump to verse 7 of that same scripture. Look at, the, look at what God told the man of God before uh, when God sent, before God sent him. And the king said unto the man of God, uh -huh. Come home with me. Come home with me. And refresh thyself. And refresh thyself. And I'll give thee a reward. And I will give thee what? A reward. A reward. Next verse. And the man of God said unto the Now, hear what the man of God. And the man of God said unto who? The king unto the king. If thou will give me half even thy if you house, give me the half of your house, I will not go in with you. I will thee. not go in with you. Neither will I eat bread. Neither will I eat bread. Nor drink water. Nor drink water in this place. In this place. Next verse. For so was it charged me. For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord. By who? Word Please of the answer Lord. me, church. Who told him? God. So before he came, God told him. Don't eat there. When you get to this place, don't even drink a cup of water. Don't eat there. Ay, ay, ay. Even if the king wants to give you a reward, don't collect it. That was God's instruction to him. Saying, eat no bread. Take it again. Take it again, verse 9. Take it again. For so was it charged me uh -huh. by the word of the Lord. By the word of the Lord. Saying, saying eat no bread. Eat no bread. Nor drink water. Nor drink water. Nor turn again by the same way. Or not turn again by the same way. That thou camest. So God is telling him, when you have delivered this word, don't eat bread. Don't eat water. Don't take anything from there. And the way you used to come, don't follow that way when you are going back. Change direction. Go another way. So if you come by this way, pass another way to go home. Am I communicating here? That most of you, when you are coming to church, you came through this direction. And God told him, if you come through this direction, after you have delivered your message, don't pass here. Pass the other side. Am I communicating here? Now when you look at it, does that even make sense? What kind of instruction is that? Don't eat. Don't drink. And when you pass away, don't follow it again when you are returning. It doesn't make sense. Am I teaching here? Am I teaching here? Am I teaching here? So I shall fire. Now, look at what happened to him when he disobeyed. Give me from verse 20. It's a long story. Then the Bible talked about how a prophet came and was angry. The prophet is an old prophet. In fact, this story, they should refer to the Bible, the story of the old and the young prophet. The young prophet, the old prophet was so angry that how will God speak to a prophet? And God will now send a prophet from Judah, from another town. Me that I'm in this town, God did not use me. He, the sons of the prophet went to go and tell the prophet. And the, prophet and, the prophet, and the old prophet was so angry. And he said, okay, I know what to do. And the Bible says, and he asked them, which direction did the prophet use and left? He said, he passed another. He said, okay, he saddled his ass, his donkey, and went to meet him. And he met the prophet sitting on, under a tree. I said, are you the prophet that spoke by the word of the Lord that so so will have to say, yes, I'm the one. He said, ah, the Lord has told me that you should come to my house, that I am also a prophet. The Lord said, I should welcome you, that you should eat bread and drink wine and sleep. Then the following day, you can go. 
He said, no, God told me not to eat bread and drink wine. The prophet said, no, I am a prophet of, of God. And an angel appeared to him. The, pro, the old prophet lied to him. And he followed the prophet. After he followed the prophet, verse 20, look at what happens. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. As he sat at the table. As, and as he sat at the table. That the word of the Lord came unto the prophet. That the word of the Lord came unto the old prophet. That uh -huh. brought him back. That brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God. And he cried unto the man of God. That came from Judah saying. Everybody look up. God did not use this prophet to prophesy to the king. God used a younger prophet to prophesy to the king. Now, when the younger prophet disobeyed God, God decided to use the old prophet that he neglected to speak to the young prophet. I don't know if you don't understand that. Because the man violated divine direction. Read it again. Verse 20. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. As they sat at the table. As they sat at the table. That the word of the Lord came unto the prophet. That the word of the Lord came to the prophet. That brought him back. That brought him back. This guy obeyed God. He, he was already on his way. A prophet came alive. There are some people here. Some prophets have lied to you. God has sent me. You're a young prophet to prophesy to you. God has given me, given me the word of God concerning your life. But because your ear cannot stay in one place and your legs cannot stay in one place, that is how you went to enter into another prophet's house and he gave you another syllable that God never gave to you. And that is why there are problems in your life. I know of a family here. I didn't know that they had another secret prophet. And yet they come here, I prophesy to them. I pray for them. They came at me and said, Papa, one prophet said this will happen. I said, I did not see it. And anything I did not see, God has not spoken. I said, it's a lie. I said, God gave you to me as a member. And God said, I should watch over you. And I'm watching over you. If there's anything that will happen to you, God will tell me. Look at the young man God gave prophecy last on Sunday. That, that John this happened to him before. Am I communicating now? And I saw how they took him to hospital. They were using um, pipe for him to urinate. Now, I could see this before it happened. Why? Because he's my son. He's a member of this church. Am I communicating here? I'm watching over him. Just like the way I'm watching over everybody here. And God has commissioned him to me. And anytime I'm praying, I pray for everybody. So there is nothing that will happen to you that I will not see. Am I communicating here? And God spoke. And that was how they followed that other prophet instruction. The prophet ate their money. Ate, 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 ate their money. They came to me. I said, Madam, I told you, there's nothing like that. Now, I did been, I was a Carlos and a cunning prophet. I was say, okay, that's true. Give me the money. The money for enter my pocket. <laughs> Some people don't want to hear through. They, they want, they like drama. You have a prophet. He prophesied to you. What are you looking for for another prophet? The word of the Lord from your prophet is enough. Because when God has given you a prophet, it, it means that your, 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 your vision is clear. God is not an author of confusion. There was one man that came to my house and said, Papa, my wife went to... Uh, my wife went to a church somewhere and this is what they said this is what the prophet prophesied he said this and that i said hey. anything your prophet never say if you hear it from another place close your ear am i communicating it? and i told him i said Alive, come to church and let me pray for you there's nothing like that will happen. And now we are waiting. Nothing like that has happened. Am I communicating now? If God no show me, it no go happen. God cannot bypass protocols. God is a God of order. When God has given you a head, he will not go and speak to another head to come and speak to you. God will speak to the head he has put over you. Am I communicating here? Can I pray for you? Every voice of confusion that wants you to disobey the word of the Lord over your life. Let it catch fire. Let it catch fire. In the name of Jesus.
Jesus Christ. Sit down. There was one of my daughters those days in school. One, one guy came, went and meet her. He said, the Lord said I should tell you that there is death that is about to take you until you pay your tithes to me before you can be free. The name of the girl is Justina. One useless friend of mine. Just looking for a way to siphon money. She came and met me and said, Papa! Because so Papa, right from day one, it's Papa did they call me. I don't know why that name pulled me up. Please, am I an old man? And many times I've turned on this altar, I've told you we should stop calling Papa. Yet now see they call me Papa. I need deliverance from that name. I said, what happened my daughter? She said, that your friend, oh, he came and prophesied. I should be paying tithes to him that if not death will carry me i said go and sleep eat don't fast enjoy no death is coming as long as i didn't see it it will not happen it's a lie am i communicating and she went back and she went to meet me i'm disappointed i thought you are a friend to so 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 and so that was one time i have one son after i gave a lady prophecy he went after church and found me that hmm. Papa did not see where. Can I prophesy? I said, what? Well, and the lady said, what prophesy? He said, there was a vision I saw concerning your life. This is what the Lord, this is what the Lord said. When I got home around seven, around, I just had a phone call. I said, hello. Hello? Papa, how are you? I said, fine. Ah, why are you calling me? hope there's no problem. Hey, after service today, that your pastor, he called me. He said, this is the revelation he saw. I said, don't mind him. I said, go and sleep. Am I communicating? Some people are, some people can be used to cause confusion. And he was a son that was still training so that he can discern the voice of God from the voice of men and from evil spirits. Because evil spirits are everywhere. They are looking for distraction just to distract you. And I told him. And I said, Is this true? This is what I had. This is what I had. You could not lie. I said, yeah, I said Did I tell you that anytime you have any vision or anything concerning anyone in this church, you should come and tell me first before you tell the person. Because you are not sharp enough to know because you are still under training. I have not commissioned you. So that grace for you to know. For you to have an edge around you is not yet there. So spirits can still come. That was why the serpent did not come to Abraham. Because Abraham has an edge around him. But the woman, there was no edge. Because God never gave her the instruction. Am I communicating here? Am I communicating here? Someone shout fire. Someone shout fire. The devil is cunning and is looking for how. He can twist your heart. Now look at what happened to this man. Give me verse 21 from that scripture. And he cried unto the man of God. And he cried unto the man of God. That came from Judah saying. That came from Judah saying. Thus said the Lord. Thus says the Lord. For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord. For as far as much as you have disobeyed the what? The mouth of the Lord. The mouth of the Lord. And has not kept the command. And you have not what? The commandment. So say the divine instruction. So say the divine direction. He said for as much you have not kept the divine direction of God towards you. What happened? What will happen to him? But came as back and has eaten bread. And came as back and you eat bread. And drunk water in the place. And you drunk water. Of, of the which the Lord did say to thee. And of the which God told you. Eat no bread. Eat no bread. And drink no water. And drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the Thy carcass shall not come to the sepulchre of thy father. Of your fathers. Next verse. 
Verse 24. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. After verse 23, he had eaten bread. After he has eaten bread. And after he had drunk. And after he has drunk. That he saddled for him the ass. That he saddled for him the ass. To wait. To wait. For the prophet whom he had brought. For the back. prophet who entertained him. Let me use that and, word. Uh huh. And when he was gone. Verse 24. And when he was gone. A lion met him by the so way. So say a lion. A lion, uh huh. Met him by the met way, him by the way, and slew him, and slew him, and his carcass was cast in the way, and the, and his carcass, which means his dead body, was cast in the way, and the ass stood by it, and the ass stood by the, by it, uh huh. The lion also stood by the carcass, and the lion also stood by the carcass. Don't worry, a day is come. I'm going to, I will demystify this mystery. There's a mystery there, but what I want to point out is this. The Bible said, God, or should I say, a lion appeared and killed the young prophet. Untimely death came to the house of a prophet because the prophet failed to carry out instruction. God said, I am sending you in that land. Don't eat water. Don't drink water. Don't eat bread. Don't even take anything. Don't swallow anything. And the way that you used to come, change it. Use another route. But a prophet came and said, Oh, says the Lord. Can I say this? When God has given you a, an instruction directly, even if another prophet come and tell you, says the Lord, please kick it out of your life. Am I communicating here? The voice of God is supreme over any other voice. Am I teaching here? When God has spoken, believe God. God told him, this is what you must do. But the prophet was carried away by prophecy. He was carried away. And he told the prophet, Ah, I honor you. Ah, you are you are you are a father. Maybe self, he was one of his role models. Oh, you are the prophet uh, Elisha Kelvin. Oh, great man of God, man of God, I, I honor you, sir. But he didn't know that there was a lying spirit that was in the prophet. There was a lying spirit. There was a lying spirit. Old prophet, young prophet. The young prophet did not know that he's more connected to heaven than even the old prophet. Am I communicating here? Am I communicating here? There are people who are very, their church is, they are not even up to 50, but they are more connected to heaven than those who have 50,000 auditoriums. Are you hearing what I'm telling you here? Because you have, or because you have been in ministry for 100 years, sir, doesn't mean you are close to God more than the, a younger generation. Am I communicating here? There are people that God is using without apology. Despite they cannot even celebrate 2,000 naira in their account. And there are some people who are big. They have billions building cathedrals. And God has left them. God has left them. What is the instruction of God to us? What is God's instruction in your life? What is, what is that that God has said? Obadiah, he married a wife. God said, go and marry a prostitute. If he goes and tell his sons, I say, Ah, oh, God told me to marry a second wife. He say, Oh, God, you're a liar. The Bible say a man and a woman. No be so. Please answer me. Uh -uh. Hello. If I stand here now and I tell you that the Lord said I should marry another one, my wife will be my first critics. You say, Oh, God did not call you. Then if I now come here and say it, Oh, my God, all of you will disappear from this church. But see a prophet in the Bible that had three wives. And God said, not good wife, oh, one is going to be a prostitute and one is going to be a harlot. What kind of instruction is that? How can God tell a prophet to eat shit? And God says, a prophecy. And God says, you have to eat it for 30 days. If you see me eating shit, I say, uh -huh, Papa has started doing Yahoo. Now Yahoo, Yahoo boys, they eat shit. In fact, he get video for him. You say, God, no deal with this one. Prophet, when they eat shit, I run away. Am I teaching here? There are instructions that will come to you. They may look stupid, but it is God speaking. The Bible says in the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the Lord shall use the foolish things of this world to confirm the wise. The things that the world has neglected. The things that the world don't understand. He said, I will use the foolish things of this world to bring wisdom. So God is not after your approval, whether it makes sense to you or not. That's why I said God can tell you to live your comfort zone and God said go into the forest in that place I will make you in that place I will make your name great God can say no Emeka 
Ah, he's rich. Yes, he's, he's, he's wealthy. And God said, no, you are not going to marry a wealthy man. You are going to marry a poor guy who only has secondary school certificate. And I wonder, God, what kind of instruction is this? And a rich guy, a doctor will come knocking at the door of your house. I want to marry you. In fact, I am ready. My parents are ready. Just say yes now. Next week, we are coming for introduction. And God said, no, tell him no. For I have prepared a man for you. And you ask the Lord, who is the man? And God said, ah. Ah, young guy that is in the church, that guy that has only secondary school certificate, that is the man I prepared for you. It doesn't make sense. Which among the girls now, God tells you to go and marry a guy, a mechanic, or someone that packs shit, and God says, That is your wife, that is your husband. Tell me, will you obey that instruction? <laughs> some of my daughters, some of them are looking down. That is the instruction of God for you, that is the dealings of God for you. Am I teaching here? It may not make sense. It may not have wisdom. You want to go back to where water is flowing. Where there are rivers of living water. And God said, no, I'm taking you to a dry ground. You want to go where there is light. And God said, no, I'm sending you into thick darkness. Like I said, God can say, you want to be rich? You want me to be, you want to be a billionaire? I say, God said, now, remove all your money in your account and go and give your profit. Say like, eh, God, this is my savings. And God say, yes, carry it and go and give your profit. Foolish instructions. But there is embedded the key to your vision. There embedded is the key to your glory. God must have instructed you, say, your, your, your first fruit, give it to him. Some of you are still struggling with tithes. Your tithe is not even, and God is wanting to say, if you don't even pay tithe, if I now tell you that to give me 50% and to make you a billionaire, will this person even do it? And the angels in heaven are not saying, see God, let's just forget this one. Let him keep on going to church and be praying. The day that he is faithful, will give him the next instruction. Can I say this? To the dealings of God, there is always a next instruction. You may come with God saying, don't wear shoe. The next one may be, God say, take off your clothes. The next one, the Lord will say, don't use cream on your hair. These are parables I'm giving to you. Let me show you the last scripture we pray. Give me the book of Luke. Luke chapter 10. From verse 3. Let's have it on the screen. I want to show you the last instruction that we pray. This is what God told his own disciple. Jesus told his disciple. He said, go your way. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. So shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. He said, I send you forth as what? Lambs. In the midst of who? Wolves. But look at what he said. He said, as you are going, carry neither paws, nor scrip, nor shoes, and salute no man on the way. God was telling the 70, if you are going to carry this power, I've given it to you. And if you must fulfill this, this, this vision, don't wear shoes. These are apostles of Jesus. They are going to another place. God said, no, no carry show. We had be, walk barefooted. If you want the power of the Holy Ghost to be with you. Please, is this Old Testament? This is New Testament. Luke chapter 10. Abi, Abi, is it in now? Luke chapter Carry, carry no pause. Don't even carry anything you used to eat. Carry no bag. And don't carry script. Don't carry shoes. Just leave those ones. Because some of you, when you want to travel, if you don't carry three air cool box, you never travel. You'll be dragging yourself. Then without a cover, hey, 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 she's going say, hey. you'll be dragging it. No. God said, no. Leave all those things. A divine instruction came to Gideon. God told him, he said, I am going to deliver, use you to deliver the house of Israel from the house of the Philistines. But this is what you are going to do. Go and bring men. You know what Gideon do? Gideon went to gather over 100,000 men. The Bible says he brought 150,000 men to go and battle. God said, Oga, you know, go work like this. And God said, reduce them. And he reduced to 50,000. God said, ah, ah, it's not going to work like that. God said, okay, you know what I'm going to do? Go to the river Jordan, carry them. And tell them to drink water. The ones that drink like human beings, send them home. But the ones that drink like dog, they carry them to battle. So God knew. God said, I am looking for dogs on the mission field, not human beings. So the one that would drink like dog, 
the one that they will use their tongue and be licking the water and when he counted them that licked the water like dogs you know how many were they? 3,000 and they are about to face a nation that is coming with 300,000 and God said uh -huh, now you will defeat them 3,000 against 300,000 please what's, what's the hope? am I communicating here? there was no hope I said, God, you mean you are going to deliver with only this one? The ones that even, they didn't even drink like human because eh, just for you to know that I need people that their head is not correct. I need the people that their head is not correct. Divine direction. What is God telling you, sir? What is God telling you, man? All your life you have been living, you have been eating and drinking. Have you ever asked God, what is the divine direction for my life? For me to fulfill destiny. God, are you saying I should stay in Zaria? Or are you saying I should leave Zaria? What are, your, what are your instructions to me? Because every point, every stage, there is an instruction. Abraham started to live with your father's house. The next instruction is was for him to circumcise. Maybe so. Then the third one, God said, go and kill your son. How many instructions have you collected from God to fulfill destiny? 